Using Samson's Inspection and Retirement Guidelines We often hear the question from customers, when should I retire my rope? The most obvious answer is, before it breaks. Without a thorough understanding of how to inspect it, what to look for, and what its load history is, you're left making an uneducated guess. The visual inspection of synthetic ropes before use is critical in most industrial applications. The residual strength of the rope, the prime indicator of its useful and safe remaining working life, must be assessed before committing the rope to continued use. With high-performance synthetics like HMPE replacing steel wire ropes in many applications, the need for a method to determine the state of the rope is more critical than ever before. The problem is that there is no common standardized language or reference scale to describe the state of a rope. To date, judgment on the state of the rope has required a synthetic rope expert to complete an on-site inspection. The alternative is removing the rope from service and testing the rope to destruction in order to evaluate residual strength. Samson offers several guides to inspecting their high-performance ropes. Inspection and retirement checklists are available in the Rope User's Manual, in the technical sections of most product line catalogs and brochures, and as separate wall posters. In this video, we'll be using the Samson Inspection and Retirement Pocket Guide to inspect your rope. The procedure it follows is the same as that used in the Samson app for iPhone and iPad, and in the Samson Rope User's Manual, and many other printed versions of the inspection and retirement checklist. Ask your Samson rep for a copy of the pocket guide or download one of the examples from Samson's website, samsonrope.com. Inspecting your rope should be a continuous process of observation before, during, and after each use. In synthetic fiber ropes, the amount of strength loss due to abrasion or flexing is directly related to the amount of broken fibers in the rope's cross section. As a general rule for braided ropes, the rope should be retired from service when there is 25% or more volume loss from abrasion, broken, or worn fibers. The inspection process begins with preparing the rope. Take the rope out of service and remove any load or tension. The entire length should be flaked out on the floor or deck so the line can be fully examined. Inspect the entire length of the rope or as much of the working section as possible, looking for cut strands, compression, pulled strands, melted or glazed fiber, discoloration or degradation, inconsistent diameter, abrasion, and the overall condition of the rope. Check the integrity of any splices in the rope. If inspecting a single braided rope, open the braid at several points along the length to check for internal abrasion and the condition of the fiber. Any problem area should be noted and the severity of the damage assessed using Samson's Inspection Guide or guidelines set forth by your company or organization. A decision is then made on whether to repair or retire the rope. Along with noting the damage areas of the rope, the inspection should include a survey of those points where the rope contacts other hardware or surfaces while in use. The condition of these surfaces should be assessed with a surface comparator. In most applications, Samson recommends a surface finish no greater than 300 micro inches. However, careful consideration of appropriate surface finish should be given for any application where synthetic ropes interface with hardware, since the critical threshold may differ by application. Any sharp edges or rough surfaces from other uses should be repaired before the rope is put into service. While the rope is inspected for condition issues, it's a good time to also look for twist in the line. Twist can significantly reduce the strength of a rope by causing the strands to be unevenly loaded. If twist is found, lay the rope out and working from the twisted section to the end, turn the rope in the opposite direction to remove the twist. Rope that has been in use for any period of time will show normal wear and tear. Some characteristics of a used rope will not reduce strength, while others will. If, upon inspection, you find any of the conditions shown, 
you must consider the following before deciding to repair or retire it. The length of the rope. Can a damaged section be removed and still have enough rope length for its intended function? How long has it been in service? What type of work does it do? Where is the damage? What is the extent of the damage? In general, it is recommended that you repair the rope if the damage is in localized areas. Retire the rope if damage is over extended areas. The inspection process. Here's what to look for when inspecting your ropes. We're going to show you inspection criteria on single braided ropes, double braided ropes, and cord dependent double braided ropes. Each has its own characteristics and limitations in terms of how and what to look for. Inspecting the external condition of your rope. Cut strands. Look for cut strands. If two or more strands in proximity are cut, the rope should be retired or repaired. Cutting is generally caused by running the rope over sharp edges or surfaces, but can also be due to localized abrasion or cyclic tension wear. On standard double braided ropes, as shown here, the rope's strength is shared equally between the cover and the core. Two cut strands will significantly affect the rope's strength. On covers that have two or three yarns grouped together in the braid, each group of yarns is considered a single strand. To correct this condition, if possible, remove the affected section and re-splice with the proper end-for-end -end splice for the rope type and fiber. If re-splicing is not possible, retire the rope. For cord-dependent ropes, if the cut strands are in the cover only and the core strands are not affected, the cover may be repaired depending on the length of the damaged section, the age, and the function of the rope. Compression. Compression is usually not a permanent condition. It can be repaired. It is caused by the fiber molding itself to the contact surface under a radial load. Look for a visible sheen to the area and stiffness. Do not confuse compression with melted fiber. They can look similar. Flexing the compressed area of the rope will loosen up the fibers and remove compression. Pulled strands. Strands that are pulled out from the braid pattern of the rope, but are not otherwise damaged, can be worked back into the rope. Pulled strands are caused by the rope snagging or catching on a piece of equipment or other surface. Pull gently on the strand to locate its next position in the braid. Then, working from the pulled section in both directions, bring it to the same position in the braid as the other strands that surround it. Melted or glazed fiber. Look for fused fibers, visibly melted or charred fibers, extreme stiffness that does not loosen up with repeated flexing. Melting or glazing can be caused by exposure to excessive heat, shock loading, or sustained very high loading. Double braid should be closely inspected to determine if the damage affects the core strands of the rope. If possible, remove the affected section and re-splice with the proper end-for-end -end splice for the rope type and fiber. If re-splicing is not possible, retire the rope. Discoloration or degradation. Look for discoloration of the rope, fused fibers, brittle fibers, stiffness of the rope. Discoloration is generally caused by chemical contamination. If possible, remove the affected section and re-splice with the proper end-for-end -end splice for the rope type and fiber. If re-splicing is not possible, retire the rope. Inconsistent diameter. Inspect the rope for lumps, bumps, or flat spots on the outside of the rope that are not consistent with the rest of the rope's shape. This condition often indicates that there are broken strands internally. This condition is most frequently caused by shock loading the rope. If possible, remove the affected section and re-splice with the proper end-for-end -end splice for the rope type and fiber. If re-splicing is not possible, retire the rope. Abrasion. Of all the forms of damage that rope can be subjected to, the most commonly observed are cutting and abrasion. Both result in broken fiber filaments in the rope and, depending on the severity of the condition, a potential reduction in the rope strength. The effect of abrasion on the residual strength of the rope is more difficult to assess than cutting or other forms of physical damage. 
To help assessment in the field, the second side of the pocket guide is devoted to a visual comparator of the various states of both internal and external abrasion of single braided ropes. The Samson app for iPhone and iPad also have an abrasion comparator to help in assessing the condition of your single braided ropes. Inspecting for abrasion on single braid ropes is straightforward. Inspect the exterior surface of the rope to determine the relative quantity of filaments that are broken. Compare the overall appearance of the rope to the pictures in the abrasion comparator. Now, open up the braid and inspect the internal strands. Look for broken or powdered fibers caused by internal abrasion. Again, compare the internal condition to the pictures in the abrasion comparator. Note the position on the scale of the picture that the condition of the rope most resembles. The comparator shows seven levels of damage, each color coded to help identify the possible corrective action to be taken. Both internal and external damage are shown. Levels 1 and 2 are coded green and indicate minimal strength loss. Levels 3, 4, and 5 are coded yellow and signify a loss of strength. You should consult your Samson rep for advice on retirement. Levels 6 and 7 are coded red. This indicates severe strength loss. Retire the rope immediately or follow the guidelines established by your company or organization. On standard double braid ropes, look for reduced volume in the cover strands. If the remaining volume of the cover strands is 50% or less, the rope should be retired. For core-dependent ropes, inspect carefully to make sure that there is no damage to the core strands. As long as the abrasion damage is limited to the cover or jacket, it can be repaired. If there is any question about the condition of your rope, consult your Samson rep for advice on retirement or repair procedures. For more information on inspecting your ropes, abrasion repair procedures, and splicing instructions, visit SampsonRope.com. You'll find full information, product information, and specifications, as well as resources and literature to assist you.